If you look at the history of Batman, he's always been the first to embrace every new technological advance. I mean, he has to. He's not Superman. The suit allows him to do things he couldn't do without it, but, you know, without it, he's still Batman. To put him in the future, he had to be more high-tech. We wanted it to look in such a way that, you know, within a half a second of looking at it, that you would immediately go, oh, okay, that's Batman. The idea was to build upon the old one. What was sort of sleek, dark, and scary, black cape, black mask, ears, things like that had to sort of remain. We didn't want him to look just like Bruce Wayne with a bunch of junk on him. We wanted to have his overall silhouette be completely different than the classic Batman. He didn't have a cape. We didn't want to do that. As technology advances, everything's all about miniaturization and making things smaller and more powerful, but still small. So I figured, hey, Bruce Wayne's smart enough, and the technology is probably going to exist to make all that stuff really, really compact so I can still keep his silhouette very, very sleek. The idea was to make him even more frightening, less man and more bat. Early on, came up with the idea of putting him like pretty much head to toe in black with red accents. The red bat on his chest, really violent contrast with the darkness of his costume. So there was almost this sense of blood on his chest, which kind of gave him a, a frightening vampire-like image. It's very Dracula, which has always been a part of the Batman mystique to me. <gasps> now, where is ink? I don't know. Wrong answer. Terry is just a punk kid in a suit. So the suit has to do a lot more work for him than the original Batman suit had to do. So the suit had to scare you right off the bat. We wanted to keep Terry very lean to make him seem like a teenager. We didn't want to make him look like a big, you know, bodybuilder. The old Batman was all about stillness and then bursts of energy, whereas this Batman, the minute you saw him, he was leaping at you. By keeping all the lines very, very sleek without a lot of bumps and bulges, it was a lot easier to accomplish that. The new bat suit was really cool. We tried to put as much technology into it as possible. It's controlled by the mind, and so batarangs, instead of having to pull them out, they just pop up within the suit. It enhances the strength quite a bit. It sends readouts directly, you know, into the mask. There's an uplink with the Batmobile and also the bat computer. The whole suit wasn't conceived all at once. As episodes were being written, capabilities were thought of. One of the major things that the suit provided for us that ba the old Batman show never had was that he could fly in short bursts. His flying capabilities were going to have to be limited, sort of gliding and quick spurts and things like that. We didn't want to push it too far. But given that many of uh, Terry's enemies could fly, it just sort of evened things up a little bit. This automatically made him different from Batman, who kept uh, using his grappling hooks and gouging the, <laughs> the building so kind of sense. Having the technology now in the suit in the future, he could he could do things with his vision, seeing in the dark, magnification. And he also had things like out of his fingertips where he could actually hear things through glass because, uh, you know, he needs to spy. It really does allow Batman to be 200% more efficient than he was before. Synaptic controls, neuromuscular amplification, flight capability. <laughs> this thing might be old, but it's still cutting edge. The tricky part about making a suit was that if it gets too suity, it's no longer Batman. This is something that is really designed to be kind of a second skin and more of a full body version of the utility belt than a war suit. I don't think you have to worry about the suit making him all powerful just because his villains were so incredibly powerful. He was always outgunned. He never won because the suit was better than the bad guy suit. There's always that temptation when you're doing a futuristic show to kind of predict where technology is going to go and how it's going to change society. Things that we thought were going to be a long ways away are here right now. You know, we thought that the comlink was really futuristic stuff. The way he would actually tap his ear, the, the sort of Bluetooth type uh, uh, cell phone thing was actually not in existence at that time. We didn't want, when he turned invisible, we wanted to, for the audience to still be able to see him. At the same time, we also figured, hey, that kind of makes sense, you know, if they, if they ever do come up with some kind of invisibility gadget, it's still not going to be perfect. You're still going to probably see a hint of that person there. They are now working on those things where they're, they're fabrics that, that bend light. And some things that just, you know, they, they just seemed right. You know, the invisibility, the magnetized feet for hanging upside down like a bat, the, the flight capability, it all just sort of worked. The 
this is not the Batman of today. This is the Batman just slightly into the future. We didn't want to make him so overpowered that the suit defines what he is. He still has to have a personality within that suit. And that was something that we certainly wanted to keep all the way through to the end. It was about why he was a hero and why he was his own man. It really didn't have anything to do with the suit. It's only the suit that's out of commission, not Batman.